There he goes. You're all set, JD. Okay. You can hear me, Richard? We can hear you. Okay. Welcome, everybody. Um, and Richard, you just break in if, if I'm talking too loud or too soft and tell me. But tonight, we just want to have a good time, look at a lot of real pretty photos of the topic is exciting new camellia varieties, but I'm actually going to start off with some that are a little bit older because look at this next slide. Please note, newer is not always better. Okay. I don't know how many times I've heard somebody say that they chopped down a camellia and grafted some new variety on it. And then after they saw it bloom, they wish they had never done it. But New camellias are exciting, okay? But just to keep it in a, keep our frame of mind, I want to talk about that not all newer isn't necessarily better. And I want to run through some just great ones that you don't want to chop these down and graft something new on these varieties. Here's a real old one from the 1800s, Methoniana Supreme Variegated. Hewlin Smith loved this one. We thought it was so good that it deserved a name other than Methoniana. So down here in South Georgia, we call it Avery Island. Okay, that's another nickname for Methoniana Supreme Variegated. Okay. Then what about this one, Ville de Knots? Oh my gosh, Hugh, I had to help Hewlin Smith make his phone, his little flip phone back then, have this bloom. This it wasn't this exact bloom, but it was this variety. He loved Ville de Anybody that's been around camellias a long time has like a passion for that bloom. And Ville, it was a Doncalara back in the 1800s, but in 1910, it got this variegation and a few more, I understand Ville has a few more petals, I believe, than, than the Doncalara. Tiffany, if you're a member of the ACCS, yes, you're gonna get a journal and the photo for the next journal is going to have that exact bloom right there on it. And the reason I picked it is just because I love it. Okay, I love Tiffany. In the Hewlin Smith Garden, it was dedicated um, during the Tallahassee National Convention. We dedicated the Hewlin Smith Garden here. It's just a block down from my street. And that garden has about three solid Tiffany's and a couple of variegated Tiffany's and they're just gorgeous. They're huge and gorgeous. So Tiffany's not a new one, but it's a great old one. So just look at a few more old ones before we get to newer things. Julio Nuccio Variegated. I'm not sure I'm saying that exactly right, but back in the 70s and 80s, oh my, it won everything. It dominated. I mean, if you look back in old yearbooks at who went, and it's still a great one, okay? Randolph Mathis has like, he has a, like the McVeigh strain. He has all these different strains of the Julio Nuccio, but um, wonderful old camellia. It was um, 1956, and then they variegated it soon, you know, a few years later. I, I have to mention, I live about 20 miles from Quickman, Georgia. So I have to just mention the Betty Sheffields. There must be 20 or 25 or more. Betty Sheffield Supreme, I think it's, if you just had one, that's probably the one I'd pick, but um, there's lots of Bettys. It's a medium um, and it's in a lot of old gardens have the Betty Sheffields or the Betty Supremes or the Betty Beauty or, this is definitely in my top 10, okay? I think as the presentation goes along, I'll probably say this one's in my top 10, this one's in my, and there'll be more than 10 in my top 10, but this one came from Australia, okay? Um, I don't know for a fact, but Neville Hayden usually has something to do with things that we get from Australia, but um, Margaret Davis, wonderful. Showtime. If you can get a showtime to a show without having a little bitty brown spot on it somewhere, it's going to win, okay? Showtime was registered in 1978 by Nuccios. This is my wife's favorite, Royal Velvet. If you want a red, it's hard to beat. And in the yard as a landscape plant, it's just wonderful, okay? Um, 
I'm sure you've heard the story. What um, One of the Nuccios, Mr. Nuccio, I'll just say, I'm not sure which one, got out of the shower and looked down at the um, bath mat and it looked that same color as that royal, but that's how he came. And he turned the mat over and it said royal velvet was the name of the bath mat. Some people say it was that he was sitting on the toilet, but that is not true. I've heard, I've heard from reliable, so it was when he got out of the shower and he saw the royal velvet bath mat. This is another great one. This one, um, Hewland Smith named for his daughter. Her name was Lauren Smith, but she married a tutor. Um, it's an early bloomer and it's very, it's registered, it's very large. This was the first bullet. Do you see the name of who won that award? That was at the Valdosta show. I can't remember. It must have been 10 or 12 years ago. That was the first award I ever won. I haven't won that many since, but that was the first um, best large japonica. Lauren Tudor is a wonderful one. Another wonderful, I've almost, uh, and I changed it. There's, there's only a couple more before we get to some older ones. I mean, some newer ones. But um, I had this listed as must have camellias. This list that I'm going through, must have camellias. But then I thought, well, that's not necessarily true. I mean, you don't have to have all of these, but if, if you're starting from nothing, some of these that I'm going through right now are definitely some I'd put how you know, I'd recommend. And yes, Hewlin Smith was going to throw away Tudor Baby. It was in a pot in his greenhouse, not in the ground. It's a small bloom. He didn't think anything of it. And yes, I understand that um, Gordy, Clarence Gordy, he goes by Gordy down in Ocala, Jerry Conrad, Mark Crawford saved it. And then a few years later, he variegated it. And it's wonderful. It shatters. Almost all blooms are one, it's a wonderful variety. And I still grow, have a couple of, couple of them, and I live with it shattering because it's such a beautiful bloom. Early autumn, okay, it's grown even um, commercial nurseries, and it's really out there. You'll see it at garden centers. It's from the Gordies. It blooms so early, and it's very pretty. This is definitely in my top 10, Louise Fitzgerald. If you saw the last, I don't know if you can see this, the last ACS journal, you'll have, no, I think it was the one before the last one. Um, the last one has one in it, Herbert Earl Gatch, the story of Her Herbert Earl Gatch, and that's one that you'll see in a few minutes. But I mm -hmm. think Mark Crawford did um, a little story on Louise Fitzgerald and Dale Fitzgerald and um, Jerry Conrad was responsible for this. Um, this is a sweetie pie sport, a sport of sweetie pie. And if it's possible, yes, I think it is a little bit larger. It blooms early. It's, I think it's registered as large to very large, but it's very large. Here's just three of them blooming at the same time. Then we switch to a couple of reticuladas, an old one from the 70s, Tara Weaver. Okay. It won a lot of the retic awards in the 70s. And then along came this one. I'm sure you've heard of Frank Hauser, Frank Hauser Variegated. It was registered in 89. I have to put my reading glasses on to see my notes. So I'm kind of going by memory. So if I'm a little bit off, bear with me, but I believe it was 89. Walter Holmeyer decided, grew, um, originated it, and you've heard the story that he didn't think much of it. How could he not think much of it? Um, but his neighbor, Dr. Frank Hauser, really liked it. So they decided, should it be named Dr. Hauser? Or Doc, and they came up, they decided to name it Frank Hauser. And it just wins almost all the reticulata awards or the majority. And then few, um, just a few years before Hewlin passed away, um, Hewlin Smith registered Ray, Ray Gentry. It's a big, very large bloom. Now it's harder to grow. There's no doubt. It's harder to grow and keep the dye back out of than Frank Hauser, but still it's worth growing. It's a really good one. And there's the, there's the variegated. Okay. Okay. So that's a little bit.
just because it's new doesn't mean it's better than some of those we just looked at. And I just love looking at some of those. Um, some of them weren't that old, but wonderful varieties. Now, we're still not getting to the, to the actual new ones, but overlooked camellias. Often, there might be some camellias out there. There's one, for example, there was a variety called Mr. JD. It was back, registered back in the 80s by somebody in middle Georgia. I can't remember the town. And I told Hewland Smith and Mark Crawford I wanted it because my name is JD. And it took forever. Um, there was only one Mr. JD plant that we know of, and that was in the um, person's yard that registered it. He had passed away and his wife was in a nursing home and we couldn't get it. Um, but finally, Mark Crawford found a niece or a, a granddaughter and we found Mr. JD and I love it. But it was, even though it was from the 80s, it's new to me. And um, so I was really excited to get Mr. JD. There's a lot of what I call overlooked. Now, a lot of you all, that are watching today probably have some of these varieties, but they're not, you don't, I don't see them that often at shows. One of them is Gentry J. I had never seen that bloom until three or four years ago when Jerry and Carol Self started showing this at lots of the shows around the Southeast and they win best in show, best white. It was huge, it's registered as a large, but when they jib it and they grow it, it's very large. Um, Gentry J was originated by the Jacobsons in Jacksonville, Florida, and they registered a lot of good ones, and they all end with a J. Deanna J, Dan J, Mark J, um, Tiffy J. There's a lot of them um, of Mr. Jacobsons that end with a J, and they're all good. Mark Crawford's on a mission to get every one of them. And he's got all of them but one, and I can't remember, I want to think it's like Dan J, or I can't remember which one it's, that he doesn't have, but Gentry J. Here comes Mark Crawford in behind me. He'll correct me if I do anything wrong. Now this, is, we're still, now Mark, he's over here to my side. We're still not to the new ones yet. We're talking about some overlooked ones. Oh, okay. Astronova. Look at the fimbriation on that one. Now, I don't know why, maybe it's just I'm calling it overlooked because it was originated by, by Don Bergamini out in California. So maybe we did, but I first saw this at the Gordy Garden and I thought, wow. But it was actually registered in 2002. But um, real pretty foliage and just the, it's a beautiful bloom. You don't see it that often. All the bowl. <laughs> oh my gosh, who was all the bowl? Randolph Mathis knew them but I don't, um, I never did. It, I, Mark Crawford um, grew this and tried to sell it for years and nobody bought it. And he was convinced because it just didn't have a real um, spicy name, all the bowl, you know, it just doesn't jump, you know, in a few minutes, you're gonna look at one called Raspberry Ripple Piketty. Oh man, you, you want it whether you, without ever even seeing it. You'd want raspberry ripple piquette, but all the bowl, who's that? But I promise you, it looks like a pom-pom that a cheerleader would shake. If you jib that thing, it blooms early and it's huge um, and it has a unique color. So that's what you just don't, these are a few that you just don't see that often that I grafted it and I wanted it, um, most all of these. So they're like new to me and maybe they're new to some of you all. Fred Gerald Variegated. I don't think I have ever seen that at a show. I don't know anybody that has it, really, other than Mark Crawford. Um, and I don't know where he, whoever, wherever he got it. Tommy Weeks. Tommy Weeks. He got it from Tommy Weeks. But I promise you, every bloom looks about like that one, the variegation. It's registered as a large, but it's more medium to large, but you can't beat the variegation. Just be, it needs to be grafted, though. That's probably why you don't see it um, in as many gardens because it doesn't really want to grow on its own roots. Look at this one, Irene, Art Gonos. I don't know if I'm saying that right, from Fresno, California, 1985. It's a small formal double. And I guarantee you, if you brought a bloom like that, it win best, it, it win best small formal double. And it's a real compact grower. If you have a place that you don't want a camellia to get real huge, 
Um, but it's loaded with balloons. Mine's loaded with balloons, but it's only about two foot by two foot. And it's been there a long time, but it'll have lots of balloons on it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah, okay? This is another one from California, registered in 1986. It's a very large white. There's not that many very large Japonicas, and there's very few that are very large. It's not large to very large. It's registered as very large. Pretty white, just it's a unique white. Um, Meyer Peak registered that one. Okay, you get people get tired of me here, me talking about Oscar B. Elmer. It was on the cover, how much I liked it. I put it on the cover of the first edition that I that I created of the ACCS journal. Um, yes, it probably needs to be grafted, but it's worth grafting. It's a nice one. It gets very big and the very look at the variegation on that one. Randolph Mapus has a story about it that's real funny, but we don't have time to talk about it. If you ever see me, ask me about Oscar B. Elmer, and I'll be happy to talk about him. Laura's Beauty. Okay. This was registered from the Bernards. Now, I don't know that much about the Bernards, but they're from, oh, are they St. Elmo, Alabama? Saint Mobile area. Okay. And they have, have you seen, they've been registering quite a few, like Barney's this and Barney's that and Barney's Barney died. <laughs> Joe and Barney. Now, and he's passed away, but they're still naming a lot of his. Um, and I'm sure there are a lot. I just have, I haven't seen the others, but this one was um, registered back in 2011. And it's a really nice one. Um, really nice bloom. Medium, large flower and early and early sue kendall about three or four years ago mark crawford i was tired i had grafted and grafted and grafted out at his place and i was ready to go home and he brought a couple of old pitiful looking signs and said you need to graft these and it was sue kendall variegate i'd never heard of it and i thought i don't know that i really want to do this but i did and i'm glad i am it's a mini it's a miniature formal double and with the variegation, the perfect little form, I hear a lot of people say, we need more minis. Well, that's a good one. Here's Herbert Earl Gatch, and it's the one that was Mark and Gene Phillips wrote about in the last ACS journal. It's an interesting one, story about that. You need to read it. Okay? I'm sure you have, because it's been, the journal's been out a while. I put it in my top 10. Okay, I've got about 30 that will be in my top 10, but um, sometimes I say that's my favorite stripe. My favorite striper is Herbert Earl Gatch. I had no idea. Mark Crawford had no idea. Nobody had any idea who Herbert Earl was until Gene Phillips. Um, we talked to him, and he wrote a story about it in the journal. So go back and read that if you haven't. Now, this is an odd one, Polaris. Okay, This was registered in 1964 just happens to be a wonderful year. That's the year I was born. And I'd never heard of this one. This is a hybrid and Fred and Sandra Jones might have been the only ones that had Polaris. And it was a pitiful looking bush and it looked like it was about to die. It was about eight foot tall, but one foot wide and it looked pitiful, but it had this beautiful bloom on it. They have, since sort of, you know, fertilized it and taken care of this. It's at Camzelia, and you probably know um, there was a story in the last ACCS journal about Camzelia and their story. Um, but they won best in show with this Polaris a um, couple times. There's the Raspberry Ripple, and I never know if mine's technically the Piketty or just the normal because it has all kinds of different um, bloom. Sometimes there's more pink, sometimes there's less. But that's one that you don't see very often. Okay, and just a couple more and we will get to new ones. Okay, but Cleve James, I don't know if that's how you say it, Walter Holmeyer registered this one. And Hewlin Smith grew, when I knew him, he had two huge greenhouses full of a lot of reticulatas, but he also had maybe a hundred camellias out in his yard. 
This was by far my favorite camellia that he had in his yard. It was a big old bush and big blooms. And um, I grafted it from his plant. This bloomed in my yard just about a month ago. And Mark Crawford and myself and others, it's just, I don't see it very often, but Clee, it's nice. I really like it. Here's another mini. Keep hearing, there's not, nobody has any mini. We need more minis. Well, here's a mini formal double registered in 1981. It was from Louisiana, Tiddly Wings. I guess Mark Crawford got it. I have it in my yard. So again, Mark keeps saying, anything that I don't know where it comes from, it comes from apparently Tommy Weeks. But Tiddly Wings, it's a miniature. Okay? And there's not that many good miniatures. Okay. Oh, here, the last one, Showboat. Here's another one. Randolph Mathis, when I went to his house about three or four, three years ago, he gave me, you need Showboat. Oh, you need Showboat. I never heard of it. But it's a Nuccio's variety, and it's a hybrid, a large hybrid, and it's unique. Definitely unique. So a large, unique hybrid. That's one that I bet would be new for a lot of people, although I'm sure Hooten, I heard Hooten was was in the broadcast here. I'm sure he and some of the other folks like that have a lot of these, but most might not. Okay, we're about to get to the actual topic at hand recently, but we're still not quite there, okay? <laughs> we're, um, these are some that are new, but they're new because they've been recently variegated. Hugh and Smith love to variegate them, okay? And look at that one. That's the last bloom that he variegated. It was a Vernon Howe, he, he had a solid pink one, and he worked by high grafting several different, um, like Shabora Egal and other variegated, and after he passed, he never saw this one variegated. One day, Mark Crawford and I was, was in the garden, and we, what is that? And man, we got signs and we grafted it, and it's beautiful. Chief Arnold, Hewlin Smith registered this one. Jerry and Carol Self recently variegated this one. Okay. And it's a good one. I love Chief Arnold and it's really nice variegated. Dominic D. Tommaso. This was one that Hewlin never saw get registered. Um, look at that 2005-01. That was my seedling at the Thomasville Camellia Show four or five years ago. Um, now Richard, Bugellen, there's a mistake in the ACE, in the nomenclature book. It says it was registered in 2005. No, 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 no. It was just registered two or three years ago. Um, Randolph Mathis gave me this plant and said I could name it if I wanted to. But then Jerry and Carol Self visited my house and really liked it. And they named, Jerry and Carol Self named it for their grandson, Dominic D. Tommaso. In the nomenclature book, it says it was registered in 2005. Guess how the mistake was made? Do you see the variety number right there? 2005-01? Somehow that got mixed up with the year it was registered, but it was just registered three or four years ago. But it's a, it's a nice one, unique. Martha Norwood, this is a real old one, 1965. It was, reg it was from Thomasville, Georgia, and I don't have it but I've, tried, I've grafted it and failed a couple times, but it'll be on my list to graft in the future. Dr. Richard Hardison, Randolph Mathis, registered this just a few years ago. He registered the solid four or five years ago and he's variegated. He is um, registered for Dick Hardison's son that Randolph promised he'd name one for his son. Okay, finally, all of that's the introduction. <laughs> Okay, all that's the introduction. Here comes the exciting new camellias. Okay, we'll go fast. Oh, the reason we'll have to go fast is because I, I did a little spreadsheet on this. So far in 19, excuse me, 19, so far in 2021, there has already been, in two months, there's already been 21 registrations in two months. In 2020, there were 50, now this is with the American Camellia Society. Some are getting registered just with the, in the nomenclature book, but in 2020, there were 59. In 2019, there were 72. 
So in the past two years and two months, in two years and two months, there has been 152. I can't show, I'm not going to show all of them, but we'd be here all night. Okay. <laughs> in the past five years, <coughs> the past five years, there has been 288 new registrations with the American Camellia Society. So I'm going to pick and choose some that I know about, some that I think are really good. Um, so here goes. We're going to start out with quite a few from Gordy and Miss Lillian. Now, they're both, they're both not with us anymore, but Patrick and Patrick Andrews and Mark Crawford and some others are still registering some of the varieties. Here's one of the best, Lillian Gordy, very large and it's early. Everybody loves it, full peony, real early. real early. And it's huge, it's huge. That's a good one. You want Lillian Gordy. Alice in the Palace, what an odd name. <laughs> Guess who named, now this was, these are all the Gordies that are going to come up the next 10 or 12, but um, Mark Crawford named this for his daughter, Alice. Apparently when she was young, she'd enter the room with a certain, you know, walk, and they, and so it was, they called her Alice in the palace. <laughs> well, so if, Al, if, if daughter Alice had to have a one name for her, uh, Mark Crawford's other um, child is Philip, and this is Philip's choice. And it's also early and it is dark, dark red, really dark red. So that's another good one. Okay, you probably have heard about, if you haven't, you need to join the ACCS Camellia Association and I'll send you the last edition of the journal because it talked about the um, Georgia First Ladies. Okay, and what, and it's, from the Gordy collection, almost all, there's a couple, there's at least one that's not from the Gordy collection that was named for a governor's wife. But these are the governor's wives of governors of Georgia. Okay. And of course, Ros um, Miss Carter was, um, Jimmy Carter was the governor before president. This is a very delicate, really pretty, really unique. It's just um, kind of a, a really ladies flower, a good representation a good representative one for Miss Carter. Well, if you, if you have a Miss Carter, you gotta have a Jimmy. So this is Jimmy Carter is a medium rose form double. And Mark Crawford and some others in the state hobnob with Jimmy and Rosalind Carter now. They get to go to these special functions and dinners and stuff. <laughs> um, but Jimmy Carter is a really nice stripe. Okay, I'm not going to talk, I, I'm not going to do all the um, first ladies. Mary Beth Busby is a really, is another one that's really nice. Um, big bloom, pretty color. And then this is the last one I'm going to show. Mark Crawford thought this would be the dog of the group, the Elizabeth Harris, but it's such a, it's such a dark color and it's sort of unique that it's actually been one of his best sellers. Elizabeth Harris, and, and these were all um, Lily and Gordy seedlings. This is one that you definitely want to, you, you need it. If it's Lily and Gordy was the first one I showed you, well, you need Lily and Shining Star. It has pointed petals. I don't know if you can see it, but it's just a unique look. Pointed petals, it's an early bloomer, it's large, it's really, really nice. Um, Mark Croft, he can't grow enough of them. This one Mark just named, oh, it was just a Two or three months ago, we saw it. And what is that? It's a big, huge, bright, red, red bloom. Um, I think he registered as large to very large. And um, we could get some different angles to see how big it was, but just a really pretty red. It was named for a dear friend of ours that recently passed away somewhat unexpectedly from North Florida. So that's special for some of us around here. Susan Grooms. This is the... Um, Garden City, Garden Center lady here in Valdosta, Georgia. Um, it's pending. Oh, Mark just said it's pending. So it's not official yet. But I, Richard, I saw it on the Atlantic Coast Camellia Society site. So it must have gotten your pr approval. But that's a pretty, it's a, it's a medium to large, real pretty specs. Okay. Mr. Bob. Mr. Bob is for Bob Wiedemann. 
down there in Citra, Citra Florida. In addition to Mark, um, Patrick and Bob Weedham, Patrick Andrews and Bob Weedham, they've um, been very instrumental with the Lily, Lily and Gordy um, seedlings. So Bob named one Mr. Bob. Well, guess what Patrick had to do? He had to name one Mr. Patrick, okay? Um, I've never seen them, but um, I need one. I know Bob and Patrick, so I'll probably add those to my collection. And to make it even cuter, I guess Bob and Patrick named one Peter Cottontail, okay? So that's a, um, it's a medium bloom, and it kind of looks like Peter's Cottontail. It's early. And it's early, which is really nice. Okay, switching gears. Well, there's, who is that? Who's that guy? Okay, Mark Crawford. We've been talking about him. Well, he got lucky. Mark Crawford got lucky and had a, and had a Tama seedling. And I think it grew at the Gordies because he didn't know what to do with it. And it's just, it's just really nice. Tama Lock Laurel. It grows upright. It's got a really nice, well, most Tamas just grow sideways. Um, but this one grows upright, really nice. You can see from the photos, really nice. If I only had one Tama, I'd want this one. So that's saying a lot. Now, this one I don't think has been registered. Dancing Flame. It's, yeah, it's registered with ICS. Mark says it has been registered, but with the International Camellia Society. I don't know if you've heard of one called Dancing Blaze. This is the pod mate to Dancing Blaze. Neville Hayden sent it over. Um, and not many, and Dancing Blaze didn't get distributed like Dance, Dancing Flame didn't get distributed like Blaze did. But it's a really unique color. Everybody that sees it's just dying for a sign. But um, there's not a lot of signs of it available. But um, get in line, ask Mark, and I don't know if Randolph had. Mephis has it or not, but you'll want that one. Now this one I slipped in, it's really 2015, so it's not that new, but Opt Clifford Parks um, and his crew registered this one, and it's unique. It's a unique color, a unique bush, it is a hybrid. It's, um, I think it's registered as a large, but it's medium to large really, but it's got a unique, it has some like little yellow it's kind of yellowy in the center and a little pinky on the, it's a, it's an interesting bloom. Look at this one. It's kind of, see how the kind of the pointed petals, you can't get a good photo of it. It's so unique. Um, but that's one that you'll want if you don't have it. Whoever, uh, well, I know whoever, the Nuccio's registered this one and their definition of very large must be different than mine. They registered it as large to very large. And my goodness, the thing is about as big as you'll ever want to see. It's a very large bloom, unique color. It's winning a lot of sh at shows in the very large. I think in, um, in Richard, check on this one too. In the nomenclature book, it's one, it's large to very large. And on the ACCS side, it might be very, I don't know. I think I've seen it both ways, but everybody wants this one. It's patented. Oh, it's patented. So guess you guess where you'll have to go to get it? Check with the Nuccios. But um, that's a good one. Who's that fella? Who's that fella? Randolph Mathis. Look at him smiling. He's still registering some of the Hewland Smith seedlings. There was just so many of them. This is a this is a very large one. I had it bloom in my yard, and I didn't have it labeled. And I wondered what on earth is it? And I sent it to um, Randolph Mathis and he identified it, Lily Marie Nichols. Um, a good friend of the Gordies was Charles Nichols and it's somebody in his family. Um, Lily Marie Nichols, just registered a couple of years ago. Charlotte Jones, nice for, it's, not, it's obviously not formal double, you see the stamens, but it, it is until the very end, it opens up. It's a large, but it's perfectly symmetrical. Really nice bloom, named for a dear lady in Quitman, Georgia, who ran the Historical Society. This one's named for Mary Birch's um, husband. Mary Birch is a lady in um, Tallahassee, Florida, that's friends with Randolph Mathis, and this is his. Um, this is her husband, 
And it's a big, of course, very large, big, a Hewlin Smith variety. Okay, these past three. And um, Joan Blanchard, you're out there. I had your photo up and it just, Randolph didn't send me a real clear one. So there is a Joan Blanchard that is a big, large Hewlin Smith. And these, all these that I just showed you from Hewlin Smith are reticulatus. Okay, I guess Lily Marie Nichols is a reticulata. Charlotte Jones, reticulata. This one's a reticulata. You know, Hewlin Smith, love those big retics. Um, and Joan Blanchard and Judy Kerr have just been registered. They're down there with Jim Smelly in his area, friends of him. But I just didn't have a really good photo of those two. So I hate that uh, I should have I should have included it. I would have if I'd have known you'd have been watching the show here. This one was named by actually Randolph. Randolph actually named it. Um, he originated it, Sharon Wilson. Um, real unique color, kind of that um, oh sweet pea type look. Okay, but it's a meat, it's a large, no, it's a medium, and it's kind of early, nice bloomer. This Dusty Welburn, I'm sure it's named for somebody that Sam Welburn knows. I don't know. Oh, what I didn't know. That's his wife. <laughs> Dusty, Dusty Welburn is Sam Welburn's wife. Um, but this one was a Hewlin Smith seedling that you got named for Sam. And he's from Columbus, Georgia. A lot of you probably have heard that name or know him. Okay, this one's not a Hewlin Smith. This one's the only sport I think I want to show you. Mona Jury. It's been around a long time. Mona Jury is way more pink than that. It's, it's a pink variety with some shading. Um, Gail Lawrence in Tallahassee had her Mona's jury sported. And to what you see here, real pale, real. And Mona jury will win awards if you get it to a show. So this one, people are starting in our area, starting to graft this one. Mona jury prob needs to be grafted, um, probably to grow good. Okay, there's Jim and Elaine Smelly. Okay, and we're going to talk about some of his registrations. Kristen Lynn, he says that this is the best white out there. It's a large white. It's very early. And Jim says it's going to, it's going to, it's going to wipe out all the other whites. It's a Gus Menard seed, seedling. It's a Gus Menard seedling. It's a seedling. Bonnie Trot. Tri and Joan Blanchard knows who this is, but it's another sweet, it's a large, it's a sweet pea look. And if Jim Smelly says it's good, then we know it is. Okay, we know it is. There's Jim. Look what he's holding. This is a Lady Laura seedling. You know Lady Laura wins lots of awards. Lady Laura is a medium to large. This is a large. And you see the resemblance to Lady Laura. It's, it's a little bit from, it's a little bit darker with um, darker pink with kind of redder stripes um, than Lady Laura. But it, it, you can see the resemblance, but it's a little bit larger. And of course, Jim says better than Lady Laura. There's another photo of it. That's Jim himself holding it. There's Saint, this um, Jim Smelly um, had this reticulata. It's very large and he named it for Sam Welburn. Since there's a dusty Welburn for his wife, they needed to be one for Sam. Okay, switching gears just a little bit. Now, I don't know these guys that well, but I have met them. Let me see if I can, in my notes, I can find it. Kenneth Rogers, okay? Some people call him Kenny Rogers. It's not Kenny Rogers. It's Kenneth Rogers or Ken Rogers. Lee, Leo Brown, James Walker. These are some guys that hang out at the Auburn Men's Club. Auburn, Alabama, Auburn football, Auburn men's club. And they, they've got quite a collection there. And they recently registered two reticulatas. I'm sure they're good because they're picky about what they name. Okay. One's a, this is a large reticulata Auburn sunrise. And here's a very large Auburn sunset. That's sort of neat. Auburn sunrise, Auburn sunset. And then this is the one I'm really excited about, Roland Toomer. I don't even, if when the Auburn football team wins a game, they throw toilet paper in all the trees and stuff in what's called Toomer's Corner. 
I'm a Tennessee fan, so I've got my own problems in football. But um, so they named it Rolling. You get it, Rolling with toilet paper, the tumor square. But it's very large. It's registered very large and it's registered early. And it's slow growing. Mark says it's slow growing. I guess that's why he hasn't given me a sign yet. <laughs> I keep wanting a sign of it. And he says he doesn't have one to give me. Um, this is a neat, it's sort of a medium, small, medium. Um, Howard Rhodes in Tallahassee named it Pink Kiss. Really unique color, really unique color. Okay, switching gears just a little bit. Um, and then we'll finish up. We're, in a few minutes, we got to finish up with Pat Johnson, okay, if you haven't heard about her. And just a couple from um, John Wong. But this is um, Gary Shands out in California. He must have a really nice collection because he's been um, trading signs for quite a while. This is a large Carol Ann. It's his wife. He's naming this for his wife. And um, he's very picky also about what he grows and registers. And I haven't seen this one in person, but I know it's a good one. He's offered to send me a sign next year. This one he's naming for himself. His, he's Gary Shans, but he's naming this one Charles Gary. That's his first name, Charles Gary. And um, he didn't even tell me if it's a small, it looks like kind of a medium, small medium with unique color. But again, kind of like if, if um, Gary Shans approves, I think it's going it's good. It's good. Here's Don Bergamini. I bet some of you have heard his name. I, he sent this out on Facebook and, you know, it might have been a year ago, but everybody went woo-woo about it because it's so white. It is a, see if I can get this right, it's a retic hybrid, but it has um, that yellow, remember the yellow camellia, the natitidisma, I can't say that. You can laugh at Natitidismia or whatever that yellow bloomer. He crossed it with Suzanne Withers, and it's a it's a it's a retic, and it's only it's medium, medium large. But um, if you took you know that that pretty white in the retic category as a medium, um, so people have really been oohing and on about that. And he named this one. I don't know, Mark. You know who Je Joe Ellen is? It's it's one of the Bergamini clan. But this is a hybrid. This is a hybrid that's just been registered. And um, so some of you out on the West Coast um, can inform us East Coasters about Joe Ellen Bergamini. Look at this one. Gene Phillips registered Dr. Pam. This is a Tama, no, Tama, no Ura, you know, at the Tama, the old Tama by um, Lauren Tudor. Tamanoura by Lauren Tudor. What a combination, and look at that. Look at that beautiful bloom. It's early to mid blooming, and it's large. So I want that. I bet you do too. Oh, Clayton Mathis. I bet a lot of you knew him. He was um, past president of the Atlantic Coast Community Society from Douglas, Georgia. He passed away a few years ago, way too early. His wife, Nidra Ann, this was a seedling of um, Clayton's. And Nidra Ann, after his death, named it Coach Mathis. He was a coach at, uh, um, in public schools. Bill and Linda Nichols, okay, from Alabama. They've, been, they've got a fine collection and they've been registering some. I'm only going to mention a couple. Virginia Lynn, I think, is their best one. Everybody sees it, wants it. Um, it's early, medium, large, formal double, early, mid, but it's a pretty early bloomer, really nice. Darby is a burgundy color. Probably it's hard to show on the picture there. Um, he's got several others. He's got one oh, that I don't have. A, he's got a couple that I, don't, I need a better photo of. My Linda. My Linda. My Linda is really nice. I just don't have a good photo of it. He took this seedling to the Pensacola show and it came in second place. But it, everybody was oohing and on about moon blossom um, because it's white and it just kind of glows like the moon and it's large and oh, everybody wanted it. But another one beat it out. And guess what? It was another one of Bill Nichols seedlings. 
but um, a lot of people thought this one was better. So Bill Nichols is going to, you know, he's got some really nice stuff. Okay. Okay. Hold on to your shorts. We're going. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to show you the uh, all 125 that Pat Johnson has registered. And she's registered all of them in the past three or four years. Yeah. She's registered 125, maybe more. Okay. But at least that many. And yes, there's a lot of them that are really good. And I and she she's heard Randolph and say this. Some of them aren't any good at all. Okay, but some of them are really good. And I want to show you some that are really good. She names them for everybody. Okay, and you'll see that in just a few minutes. Um, and yes, there's many more on the way. She has, I've heard 12,000, I've heard 14,000, and I've heard big more than that. She's got seedlings everywhere, forest, just fields and forest stuff. Okay. Anyway, here's a good one. This is one of the earlier ones she registered, Isabel Lewis. Really nice. It blooms early. It's a large. Okay. I got to go kind of fast. This is a dark red one that's large. It also blooms early mid. Randolph Maphis approved of both of those. And he tells her some of them she needs to throw away. But he likes both of those two. Um, have you heard of Florence Crowder? I bet most of you have. She picked this one out. It is. It's, it sounds just like flat. Florence's Fancy Formal. That's a, that's a name for it. She picked it out. It's nice. I can't believe I put this one up here, but I saw it the last time I went to Pat's Pink Poodle. I wouldn't have thought I'd have wanted Pink Poodle, but I grafted it. It's large. It's got a unique little color. It's and I thought it was really nice, okay? Now, here's one. Randolph Mapha says this is ugly. Mark Crawford says, oh, he likes that. And some people love it, some people hate it. But it's a medium, I like it, it's fluted, it's interesting. It's a hybrid, it's a medium hybrid. See that it, and on the bush, it really looks different. J wings, all of these are Pat Johnson's. J stands for Johnson and Wings stands for, I might be, I don't know if it's her grandchildren or her nieces and nephews, but it's the first letter in younger children in her family. You know, W might be for Winston and I for Ingalls or something. Um, but W-I-N-G-S is the first letter in some of these children in the Johnson's families. Okay, that, but it's a nice, it's a very nice formal double. Okay, now again, I'm, I'm showing you about 10 or 12 of the 125. You'll want these. Look, now you definitely is gonna want, you want this one. You <laughs> want that one. Mark it down, write it down, okay? Outbid people. I. Um, I've got a couple of them grafted and I'm rooting four or five and I'm sure they'll go for hundreds of dollars. <laughs> Story behind this one, I went to Pat's with several, with Florence and Jim Campbell and some others. And while they were looking, I was looking for something different. And I saw this one and it, I thought it was different. And I told Pat Johnson, I like this one. I think it's the only one that I just, I, I like this one. Pat. She said, well, why don't I name it for you? And I thought, well, I didn't know. I got a lot of seedlings of my own I want to name. So, you know, I go by JD. So I said, well, okay, um, we can name it Jasper Dewey. And she said, oh, no, I am not going to name a camellia Jasper Dewey. Uh-uh, no way. <laughs> and I said, well, Pat, that's my name. She said, no, it isn't. Your name, you know, it isn't. Your name is JD. And I said, well, Pat, that's what Jasper Dewey stands for JD. So this is me. This is Jack, I like, and I went back, um, this was, it was a year ago, I saw this bloom. I went back this past year, and I wondered if it still had that dark ed pink purple edging, and, and it did. It looked at different times of the year, so I like Jasper Dewey. Jasper Dewey. Jenny Lewis, that one's unique. Everybody likes it. It's, it, it, it look, all of them look like that way, and it's large. Sometimes it can get very large. It's very unique, very unique. Celeste Richards, member of the past director of ACCS, picked this one out. ACS, I'm sorry, ACS, yeah. 
and it, it's a pretty little different colors. Jim Campbell, if the American past ACS president picks one out, it's got to be good. This is a hybrid. That's what everybody, I think people are gonna really be drawn to this one. It's a medium hybrid formal double. Here's one, look at this one, Mark C and William Corey. Mark C, you think, well, it's just a single. And you look at this, oh, and you look at William Corey, well, it's just sort of a semi-double, but these are special. These are Camellia azalea seedlings. Camellia azalea is that ever blooming, blooms almost every month of the year. And this is a hybrid, okay? Mark C is a seedling from the Camellia azalea um, variety. Um, it, they both bloom really early and they have an extended bloom season. Now, I don't know that they're gonna bloom every month of the year. Scarlet Glory seed. Okay, Mark's telling me it's a Scarlet Glory and Camellia Azalea seedling. Yeah, hybrid. So those are sort of neat because, you know, we're trying to um, hybridize with the Camellia Azalea. Well, if William Corey, well, actually Sandy Corey picked up, um, this is William's wife. She picked out this pretty white, really nice, large, good, good growing thing. So both William and Sandy Corey have a bloom. Rand, I don't know if Randolph approved this. I kid him about this. Rand, um, Pat Johnson named this one for Randolph Mathis, just named it Randolph. And I kid him because I don't think of Randolph as a white person. <laughs> I mean, not, not racial, anything, just a white bloom person. Okay. Um, but it's a large. This one you want, I want. It's a miniature and it's really pretty. Really? It's really pretty. I, that's what, and it's a mini. Um, I think you'd want that. I want this one. Okay, she's got several reticulatas. Okay, the thing about these reticulatas, she doesn't fertilize. Pat John, she doesn't fertilize. She doesn't water. She doesn't really spray. She really doesn't do anything except plant them. And they're out there in just the vast forest of stuff. And it's hot as the dickens down here. And these reticulatas are growing and not dying. So that says a lot about them. Because I've got a bunch of I've got a bunch of reticulatas that I spray and fertilize and prune and pray over and they still die. <laughs> these things live. This one is for Alex, Alex and Jane Henson in um, Quincy, Florida. This is a John Hunt seedling. Now, John Hunt's beautiful. This one's, look, look at, and it's because it's formal double. Um, this one's named for Alex Henson. It's very large. This one's Jane Henson. No, it's just large. Um, but I like that they don't show the stamens. The retics always get brown stamens so quick. These hide their stamens or their, sometimes they'll show a little stamens, but at the very, very end of the bloom. Gabriel Mathis. This one, let's see, I'm, I can't find my notes here. This one is a curtain call seedling. Okay, Gabriel Mathis. This is named for Randolph Mathis's grandson. Gail Lawrence, this is a Frank Hauser, a very large Frank Hauser seedling. Growing in terrible conditions in um, Quincy, Florida. No, 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 Cairo, Georgia. You probably have heard of Steve and Gail Lawrence. They, they go to a lot of shows here in the Southeast. This is named for Gail Lawrence, Frank Hauser seedling. And it's, oh, it's not early. Gabriel Mathis is early, early mid blooming. That's rare for a reticulata. Evelyn Bellamy, what's unique? That's a reticulata. What's unique about it? It's got some stripes. It's medium to large. Now, Randolph Mathis will tell you this, just because it's medium to large out there at Pat's, when he gets it in his place and he gives it some jib and fertilizer, it's huge. But a reticulata that has some stripes. This one's named for Pat. Look at the foliage. Kind of looks like Frank Hauser. It's actually a Mark Cannon seedling. But the, the foliage, focus on the foliage. All the foliage looks like that. And then with that pretty retic bloom. So that's Pat B. Johnson. She named it for herself. And Randolph likes this one, okay? It's got unique foliage and it's got a unique bloom. I've never actually seen it, but Randolph likes it. Randolph Mathis likes it. It must be pretty good. It's a reticulata. It's also a Mark Cannon seedling. 
Okay, do I have time before they cut me? Um, we're going to end with John Wong. I can't pronounce anything that he's registered. It's got the weirdest names, but you all probably know about John Wong. His, he's trying to get kind of light colored reticulatus and um, he's crossing retics with japonicas and most of his are three-fourths japonica. Um, so they grow really well. Um, fine, pure, holy, pure, adoring, pure, lots of, um, they root and they grow and they don't seem to be as disease prone because they have a lot of japonica in them. And we'll go pretty quick. There's about five of them and then I'll be finished. Um, fine, pure, I don't know that I could tell the difference between fine, pure, and holy, pure, and adoring, pure. Different shades of pink, but they're all really beautiful. Pluto purple light. Now, I'm not positive if it's been registered. I couldn't find it anywhere, but that's my actual bloom. I grew that. A lot of these were in, in my yard, but this one definitely was. Pluto purple light. Kind of an interesting looking bloom. It's more medium, medium to large. Nan Chan purple jade. Don't you like the sound of that? Okay. I think it's large Nan Chan purple jade. There's another picture of it. Unique color, unique color. Look at that one. Okay, now that is, let me find it in my notes here. It's a retic, it's a medium retic. It is Suzanne Withers by that yellow camellia that I can't pronounce. Metitidisma. Metitisma. I, I know Mark's telling me what it is, but I still can't say it. So um, it's got that yellow camellia in it. Look how interesting. It's a medium retic hybrid. Lake, air, ha, jade. <laughs> yellow and purple. Now I can pronounce that one. Yellow and purple. It's a medium retic. It also has that, it's Suzanne Withers by that Tisma by Elaine's Betty, of all things. Back crossed with Elaine's Betty. Really interesting, glowing, unique colors. This one used to be Dai Quo, and then he changed it to Zang Kun Lady, or however you say it. Um, that's Suzanne Withers by Kona. It's in full bloom right now in my yard. Mark says it's in full bloom out in his yard. Kona is that, um, remember that's that elegance, and mine never bloomed. I can't hardly grow Kona, but it's kind of like a white camellia, anyway. And then this is the last one, Flawless Jade. It's a white retic, and it's kind of green in the center. Um, it hasn't been registered yet. Randolph Mathis has signs of it. He gave me about four signs to register, and he wouldn't even put the name of it. I can't remember what he, he Aspen. He put Aspen on it. I said, Randolph, what is Aspen? He said, that's AKA also not as flawless Jack. He wouldn't, he wouldn't, didn't want anybody to know he had it because everybody wants it so bad. <laughs> um, so I, I grafted it. I don't know, if, I don't know if I have it or not, but oh yeah, he might get on to me. He's, um, Aspen is for his son's dog, is the name of his son's dog, but flawless Jay. And there's my wife and daughter. Now, my daughter, is about 12 years older than she was in that picture right there. Um, she's 21 now. I won't tell you how old my wife is, but, um, and that's Frank Hauser, Frank Hauser Variegated. So 